let's talk about the seven dates you need to know in your purchase contract. I'm Melody Moser with Next Home Navigator and today we're going to get right to those seven important dates that you need to know in your purchase contract. Well, congratulations! When you finally get a seller to say yes to your offer in this market, it's a big win and it's a big day to celebrate. Here are the seven dates that you need to know and track with your real estate team to make sure that you satisfy the items. So the first one is the accepted offer date. And you're asking yourself, well, why should I track the accepted offer date? And that's because the second important date that you need to track is your earnest money deposit deadline, and they go hand in hand. In Utah, your earnest money deposit must be deposited within four calendar days of your accepted offer date. Check with your real estate professional to find out how to get that earnest money deposited on time. If you're purchasing new construction or out of Utah, then check your contract because this date may be different. The third deadline that you want to put into your calendar is a seller disclosure deadline. It's the seller's responsibility to disclose the material facts of the property, and they do this through a checklist of items. The first one would be the seller property condition disclosure that they filled out and signed. They need to show you the lead-based paint disclosure if it was built before 1978, title commitment, restrictive covenants of the subdivision, HOA information, and that includes the budget, minutes, financials, and the rules and regs of the subdivision or the HOA. They also need to disclose long-term leases, short-term leases, so Airbnbs. They need to share with you the property management agreements if applicable, water rights or shares, written notice of claims relating to environmental issues, building code or zoning violations, and if the seller falls under the FERPTA, which is Foreign Investment in Real Estate Tax Act from 1980, if they fall under that, they need to disclose to you that they are indeed foreign investors. When you receive this information, please sign it immediately. That doesn't indicate that you accept all of the information in the documents. It just simply means that you've received it. So go ahead and sign that immediately. Okay, number four important deadline that you need to put into your calendar and track with your real estate professional is the due diligence deadline. Now after you receive the seller disclosures, because remember you signed that you received it, you now have the opportunity to look at all of that information, analyze it, and decide if you would like to do further investigations on anything that was in the seller's disclosures. You also have the opportunity to do any in inspections that you wish, whether it's just a simple home inspection, a radon test, lead based paint test, a meth test, like any information that you would like on your home, you'll go ahead and get those inspections completed and analyzed. We live in a world of caveat emptor or let the buyer beware. What that means is simply that you are buying a property in as is condition. The inspection allows you to know what that condition is and that it's in acceptable condition to you. If large issues come to light during the inspection period, you have the right to ask the seller to repair or compensate you for those repair items or issues. Or you can get out of the contract immediately walk away and get your earnest money back. Now the seller can make repairs, but they don't have to. If they decide not to, then you again have the right to take your earnest money, walk away and go find another property. Okay, let's talk financing. If you're getting a loan and you don't have the cash to cover the purchase price, most likely your offer is subject to your financing. And what that basically means in a nutshell is that if for some reason your loan fails, then you don't have to move forward and legally buy the property. Now, in some cases you may lose a portion or all of your earnest money depending on what the contract says and what the deadline is. 
check with your real estate professional and they'll help guide you through this process should it happen to you. Number six deadline that you need to track with your real estate professional and write down in your calendar is the settlement deadline. Now let's be honest, this is the deadline that you're looking forward to the most because it basically signals that you're at the end and that you have the loan in place, the appraisal's gone well, the inspections have gone well, everything is perfect. And there are a couple of things that are tied to the settlement deadline that I would like you to know. First of all, settlement and closing are two different things. Settlement happens when you go to the title company and you sign all of your closing documents. That's settlement. And that's also the day that all of them, you take in your down payment and all of the numbers are reconciled and prorated. So it basically is that final day. Now I'm going to say it that way because closing is actually when things are legally transferred. And closing happens about 24 to 48 hours after you sign the documents at the title company. Unless of course you have a really good lender and then sometimes it could be the same day. But in Utah, typically we're 24 to 48 hours. The next thing that is tied to the settlement deadline is number seven, your possession. Obviously this is the exciting day. This is when you actually have keys in your hands and the house is legally yours and you still got to know exactly when the seller is going to be out and when you can move, right? Well, we negotiate the possession at the very beginning and unless things come up during the escrow period, you'll go ahead and look at the contract and see whether it's upon recording 24, 48, 72 hours after closing. Now remember, it's not when you sign the papers at the title company, the clock starts to tick when it's closed or recorded at the courthouse and your real estate person or title people, they'll be in touch with you and tell you exactly when that is. Remember, moving is really stressful for both you and the seller. Both of you have a lot of plans trying to make things coordinate so that you can make this move as smooth as possible. But just so you know, it's not always smooth. Have a plan B just in case the seller isn't quite ready at the exact moment you're ready to move. Oh, okay. One more thing. I just want to note this here. Remember in the contract, the seller does not have to spick and span the property. It is broom clean and free of debris, which basically means they can go vacuum and kind of wipe out the cupboards as they leave. They don't have to wipe everything down as if, you know, they don't have to wash the walls for sure. They don't have to uh, have the carpets cleaned. They don't have to really deep clean the house before you take over. So one of the things that we recommend is that cushion time could be used for you to clean the house before you move in. Okay, just as a reminder, this is all a conversation around real estate purchase contracts in the state of Utah. If you are purchasing new construction in Utah or anywhere or outside of Utah, please ask your real estate professional. Part of their job at getting you from contract to keys is to track these deadlines and make sure that you are legally safe and that your earnest money is safe. Give us a like if you found this information helpful. Comment if you have a question. Tune in for more real estate resources, virtual tours, and Utah favorites. And contact us when you're ready to navigate to your next home.